Hi all, welcome to Tech Forum. In this video, let us see how to use Deep Java library called as DJL to detect an object through MXNet Deep Learning Engine. In my earlier video, we talked about Deep Java library. Deep Java library is a framework agnostic deep learning toolkit for Java. This can support multiple deep learning engines like TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch, etc. The engine can be changed whenever required uh, based on your need. Refer the video link in the description for more detail on the uh, basics. Today let us see how to set up a simple project with DJL, MXNet engine and MXNet model zoo to detect a objects in an image. I am going to use Maven project in Eclipse to run the sample. We are going to use the sample trained model part of MXNet model zoo. As a first step, let me create a sample Maven project. Uh, let me go to Eclipse. So this is my new workspace. So I am able to create the project through this link. Otherwise you can go to file new uh, Maven project. So let me click on um, create a Maven project. So then I am going to create a um, sample project. Um, so I am not going to select any archetype. Um, click next. I am going to say DJL. Uh, then artifact ID is DJL.examples. That's fine. Click on finish. Now the project is created. I say next step, let me set the JRE version of the project to Java 1.8 plus. I am going to use JDK 11. The supported version is 1.8 plus. Uh, anyway, I am going with uh, um, JDK 11. So let me um, click properties. Then go to Java build path. Uh, then go to libraries. Yeah, the JRE system library. Just click on edit. So I am going to use the workspace default JRE, JDK 11.04. So click on finish, then apply and close. This is fine. Also you should be setting the uh, compiler compliance level um, to the corresponding Java version. Um, so for that you go to again to uh, properties. Now search for compiler, yeah, Java compiler. So it's uh, default, it's showing as 1.5, it won't work. So change it to the corresponding version, 11. So apply and close. Let us now add the uh, required Maven dependencies to the palm.xml. So let me open the palm.xml. So we should be adding all those uh, required dependencies. I Let me copy that I already have those detail. Okay. So here, uh, le let me list out the dependencies what are we use. There is some uh, compiler related configuration. Uh, that then the main dependencies are ai.djl api um, i am using the latest djl version and um, uh, djl version is 0 8.0 i said that uh, now api then model zoo uh, then um, mxnet model zoo uh, then Ma mxnet engine uh, then another uh, one more dependency is mxnet native auto uh, then slf4j uh, symbol for logging all these dependencies can be found from this specific URL, this Maven repository URL. Let me go here. So yeah, this is the URL. So here you can find all these dependencies, not even only uh, this project, whatever we are using, even other additional uh, dependencies for other engines also. The djl.api uh, module contains the core API of the Deep Java library project. So uh, core API, this have uh, multiple modules um, like um, so engine interface metric. Um, so you can read through this. Uh, so these are, these are all the modules part of this core API. So yes, obviously the uh, dependency uh, 080 is the latest one. If you want to use the current nightly build, you can use 090 snapshot. That is the current nightly build snapshot version of the uh, API. The uh, next one is djl.modelzoo. Uh, this is a fully trained engine agnostic standard models. Um, so uh, it can contains the models, the pre-trained models. Also it is engine uh, agnostic. So let me go there. You can read through the detail here. Um, so yeah, like it shows like how to include into the project. Um, so we are in, we are using Maven. Uh, this is the, through this dependency. Even Cradle uh, uh, option can be used. Um, so now, uh, yeah, uh, we can read through what is the uh, pre-trained models. There is lot of default um, pre-trained models. So in model zoo, we can um, directly use that. Um, so how to uh, identify the model or how to use the model. So we should be using some criteria then like we setting all those uh, data to identify the specific model. So here we are trying to identify the object detection um, classification uh, model. 
uh, the values layer then uh, flavor what uh, data set so that i will show you like oh, where these values are there the next one is mxnet models you uh, the mxnet models you contains symbolic models from apache mxnet project that can be used for inference and training so let me go there um, so um, yeah mxnet models you uh, you can read through this then how to include it into the project uh, we already included this because in our project we are going to use one of the pre-trained model i will show you that what model we are going to use it uh, to identify the objects from a image yeah here list of uh, pre-trained models so there is two uh, types um, computer vision and na natural lang language processing um, so then yeah you can uh, read through this object detection uh, post estimation uh, image classification then there is a uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, categories so now again like we already seen that how to uh, find the pre-trained model in model uh, zoo um, so we should be providing the layers flavor and data set um, so if you see this these are all the values you can you can uh, look through this thing category um, cv then application what is the application model family um, then criteria so this is mainly required um, so what criteria we are going to use it to identify the model then possible values like what what criteria backbone you can specify the uh, possible values also so we are going to use object detection so we are going to use the backbone and uh, uh, this one uh, restnet 50 then obviously the flavor we can specify v1 v2 um, 1.0 whatever we re require also the uh, data set next one is uh, mxnet engine this module contains the deep java library engine provider for apache mxnet because we are planning to use uh, the apache mxnet engine so like this there is multiple uh, different modules like tensorflow engine uh, then uh, phytorch and all the supported engines are there whatever the engine we want we can use it also like we already uh, talked about this uh, the djl is a uh, engine agnostic framework so whenever required you can uh, change the engine yeah, let me go there um, so if you see here this is the um, apache mxnet engine implementation um, you can see like how to uh, include this into the project um, so this is there is a little bit variations are there so the uh, we even we added this like if i go to um, uh, the palm.xml if you see here the next one we added is mxnet native auto yeah this dependency contains the native code for mxnet so there are several alternatives um, the uh, we have multiple alternatives we can see that but this uh, auto variant uh, downloads the one matching the machine uh, the code is running on like uh, based on the C uh, gpu or cpu if you need a specific variant uh, there are other libraries that allow you to specify exactly which dependency um, to use the auto variant is recommended for development for deployments you should use the documentation to determine the appropriate variant manually so if i say this uh, auto um, like the engine or the framework, the age, uh, DJL will uh, automatically identify uh, the engine uh, that um, suits for the uh, machine or where we are running it based on the GPU or CPU. Even we can specify directly the engine um, uh, details. Like if, you, uh, if, you, if it is for Mac OS, uh, you can just say Linux x8664 uh, as a classifier. Also, the artifact ID will be uh, different. Now, same case, if it is a Linux uh, CPU, we, we can specify the corresponding value. Then if it is a Windows, uh, we can uh, specify Win X, uh, X8664, uh, then MXNet native uh, MKL. But if you specify the auto, uh, obviously this is recommended for development. Uh, we don't want to worry about that, which uh, version we should be including. Just uh, uh, the framework will take care of uh, that. The next one is SLF4J. Let me go to palm.xml. Um, so yeah, the SLF4J. So we, uh, we should be adding a logging framework uh, to log the details. If the logger framework is not added, uh, the uh, details will not be uh, logged. I am using SLF4J, but uh, you can choose your own framework. Example, it supports log4j2 also. The example projects can be found here. So if you go to this one, um, like um, AWS Labs, DJL, uh, then there is a examples uh, folder. You can find all the examples here. If you go to SRC, uh, then main then examples yeah you can see the two folders here inference and training uh, though this is uh, specific to uh, training the models this is like inferring the inferencing the data based on the model i'm going to use this uh, sample uh, um, java um, to uh, show the demo so this will um, based on the pre-trained model uh, it will detect the objects on a image even what you can do is this all samples you can directly use through maven dependency if we go to the maven dependency maybe search for example 
yeah so uh, deep java library example just directly uh, uh, include this as a maven dependency then you can have a wrapper class in your uh, project and just use these samples but my case i am directly going and enabling that java class uh, so that we will be able to see how that is uh, uh, working let me now create a simple class that will infer the objects from a um, sample image as i said earlier i am going to build that based on this uh, object uh, detection um, let me go here so yeah this is the class i am going to create a class with the name object detection Friends, this is the package name I'm giving. Just click on finish. Okay, now let me copy this. Yeah, here we are defining a criteria um, to um, like load the model, uh, the required pre-trained model. As we discussed earlier, there is there are two application types, CV and NLP. We are using CV, then object detection. Um, so you can find out all the uh, available options here. Um, so all those uh, categories are available. So I am going with object detection. Then types, so the input and output types. Uh, I'm going to use the image uh, because I'm going to identify the object on the image. So image is the input. Uh, then I'm going to get the detected objects. So I'm going to identify object on the uh, image. Now, um, op filter. Um, so as we discussed earlier, it's, I'm going to use backbone and ResNet50 uh, for this. Then so opt progress. I'm setting the progress bar so that I will be able to see the um, the progress of the model uh, loading. Yeah, then based on this uh, pre-trained model, I'm going to predict the object on the image. Now I'm storing the uh, output image to a uh, output directory. Let me now download this specific sample image uh, from the example project. Uh, for that, let me go here. Yeah, the examples um, go to again SRC, um, test, resources, um, you can find multiple images here. I am going with this one. Then you can save this image, save images. I am I'm going and saving to that corresponding uh, folder location, SRC test resources under my project. Um, save it. So this is fine. I am also going to copy two custom images. Um, so I go here and copy these two images. And go to Eclipse. I will go and paste that. Fine. Now I should be having three images. Refresh it. Okay, I have all three images right now. Let me run the program now. Um, so for that, right click. Um, I'm going to run us. Then Java application. Yeah. So yeah, it's a downloading the um, uh, trained model. So it may take some time. First time. Now the model is downloaded, it's 100%. Uh, now it's again downloading some of these DLLs. Let's wait for that. Yeah, now you can see the details here. Yeah, the car, bicycle, dog, it identified three objects. The probability is um, uh, the car uh, 0.999, then 0.95 and 93. So and also coordinates of the uh, object in the image. Okay, let me refresh it, it would have created a folder. Yeah, there is a build folder go there then output yeah you can see a detected object at png that's output image name i specified yeah you can see these uh, three objects detected in the uh, source image maybe i will go to that also um, resources if you go to that um, uh, source image yeah this is the uh, there is no identification if i go to the detected image you can see car uh, identified exactly then bicycle then dog let me now run the program for other images so if i go to uh, car uh, so there is only one car then other image is uh, dogs so there are two dogs so maybe let me go here um, so let me change this i will comment out this let me go with car um, so okay save this now run the program yeah so loading is hundred percentage because uh, it's already loaded um, so and it cached yeah so here if you see that car then probability is uh, 0.99926 now if i go to this uh, output folder let me refresh this yeah you can see the car is identified exactly 
now let me run uh, the other image also uh, if i go and comment out this and i run it for this image it's identified two dogs um, probability is again 0.92 is one and another one is nine zero now if i again refresh this and go to that uh, output yeah so two dogs are identified so we used djl along with the mxnet engine and pre-trained model from mxnet model zoo to detect the objects from an image i will be sharing the sample project in the video description djl uses the cache directories to store the downloaded models and the engine specific native files by default cache directories are located at current users home directory so we have seen that because first time while running the program it took some time to download the model um, so but next time onwards um, the model model was used from the cache folder so let me go to the cache folder so this is my uh, user folder then there is a folder with the name dot djl dot ai you can see there is a uh, cache um, they, this have all the models uh, uh, cached model then yeah cv uh, object detection ai uh, djl then you can see maxnet zoo and all those details now if i come back to this dj um, djl ai so there is a folder called maxnet this is the engine we are using it now if you go inside so the uh, the engine the uh, uh, djl identified this is the uh, engine uh, because even though we used auto uh, in the maven uh, dependency but uh, the framework identified this as the um, suited engine to run the program um, because i am using windows uh, that's why then uh, backport mkl win uh, 8 uh, x86 uh, 64 the details about the caching can be found here so let me go there uh, cache management uh, like um, yeah there is a djl.ya folder that's a parent folder uh, then each engine will have um, a different folder mxnet pytorch tensorflow so based on what framework you are using it even you should be able to change the cache location if required uh, by setting the value for this uh, uh, environment variables um, uh, D djl cache directory and engine cache directory one another thing is you can refer this specific url uh, troubleshooting.html to identify any known issues um, sometimes you may receive like no deep learning engine found exception um, two reasons like one is like there is some issue with the dll um, libraries or you are not adding any uh, engine dependency because we added the maxnet engine dependency to the maven uh, uh, palm.xml if you are not adding any dependency any of the engine uh, you should be receiving this uh, no deep learning engine found exception um, same way like uh, there is there are some other issues uh, related to intellij also like uh, some issues related to credit and uh, uh, yeah different cases maybe you can refer, refer through when you uh, face these issues okay um, that's all for today in next video let us see how to use other engines uh, to run the sample object detection um, thanks all for watching the video see you in the next video